how did you begin um, DJing and into the hip hop group? Well, I started DJing in the year of 1970 by taking what we had was your mother or your father's house system. But they used to have um, the regular record player where you used to could drop spindles of 45s or you could take it out and play it mobile. But you had the needles that when you try to put it on and think you could mix with them, the needles would go back. So that used to be a pain in the butt trying to work that. But then as we progressed on and technology has built up, then came the two turntables, the mixer, and then later on the echo chamber. And then started all the mobile style of DJ out in the streets or in the centers or the high school gymnasiums. How was your experience growing up in the um, Bronx River Housing Project? Uh, in the Bronx River Housing Project, it was a super experience um, seeing um, how the area came to be, say, with um, different problems that we was dealing with and struggles, whether it was dealing with drugs, whether it was dealing with um, community development or struggles of trying to get money um, to put in our community, to get our community center looking better than what it was looking back then. And um, just dealing with a lot of the politics that we deal with life in general, you know, and also the street gang movement that happened in Brownsville. The Zulu Nation, from our understanding, brought gangs together in unity. Why have you reached the conclusion to form this organization? Well, basically, uh, in the uh, black Latino community, there's too much problems going on, and um, too much negativity and destructions and self-hate. So we formed this organization to try to bring about that change in the Bronx. And as we started moving and traveling around the world, bringing that uh, message of peace, unity, love, having fun, knowledge, wisdom, understanding, overcoming the negative to the positive, science, facts, mathematics, faith, work, and the wonders of God to many of the other communities around the world. And it caught on, and um, we're just trying to bring people from negative to that positive. You know, to be thinkers for self and to use their own self and to be the God and the goddesses that they all are. Having to have traveled all over the world and introducing <clears throat> hip hop and the scene around to other people, was that difficult? Showing other people from different worlds, from different countries, how music, hip hop, how hip hop works? Well, it was difficult at first. Say, like a country like um, Germany. Germany was a strict, like, heavy metal country at the time and mostly had like pubs or cafes, same in France and other parts of Europe and other places when we went to like Africa and some spots of Asia and Japan, people would sit there and you'd be you know, doing your thing, rapping or singing and you want to you know, feel the emotions of the people and they just sitting there looking at you then when you finish, they just clap. <laughs> so we had to get them, every place we had to go back, go to all the little places, play get them funky, introduce them to funk, knowing what hip hop is, is based on the funk, and getting them, grabbing them off the seats and grabbing them on stage, dancing with them, showing them how to do their thing, doing the break in and doing the punk rock and all the other different styles of dances that was going at the time. And eventually it caught on and all these places started getting funky. And now we have a world phenomenon, which is called hip hop. Of the five elements of hip hop, break dancing, DJing, rapping, graffiti, and the fifth, knowledge, um, introduced by the Zulu Nation, what prompted you to include the fifth element, which would be knowledge? Well, basically, because everybody was coming up, um, we say the B boys, the B girls, the graffiti artists, the aerosol writers, the MCs, the, um, uh, what else we had? DJs. The DJs, main thing. But um, the fifth element, um, which was which I was always about, was knowledge, which is really the first element, because without knowledge, you wouldn't be able to do none of the other elements. Otherwise, you break your neck, or you run out of breath when you try to MC, or you um, when you graffiti or doing aerosol writing, the paint would be all over the place. So the knowledge is really the first element, but we say the fifth because it went that way from the DJ to the B-boys and you know, the MC and the um, aerosol writers. So we just said the fifth element, which is knowledge, culture, overstanding. In the universe of Zulu Nation, we stand on right knowledge, right wisdom, right overstanding, and right sound reasoning. 
Do you believe the five elements of hip hop is still in effect today? The five elements is still in effect, but there are some who have um, escaped the fifth element, which is knowledge, because they got caught up by media now and corporations, which is trying to control hip hop to the fullest. And now they believe that hip hop is basically what you see on MTV or BET or what is pushed on your television, telling you lies and vision. And not coming back to the sources who was the architecture of hip hop, which myself, Grandmaster Flash, Cool Herc, and all the other pioneers that brought this about to speak to them to see where hip hop was, where it's at now, and where we're going for the future. Why Shaka Zulu, out of all the African freedom fighters, um, what made him stick out in history to you? Because Shaka Zulu was a, a warrior that, when the, his whole area was um, disfranchised or uh, disorganized, that he said, I have to get this thing together by any means necessary. And he just went on his war path to bring the community together. And he went through some rough times and he did some negative things. And, but at the end, it brought a nation together and made it positive. And too bad he didn't keep going and got the whole Africa. It wouldn't be probably the situation like it is today. He might ask about when he got up to Egypt and, and places like that. But, um, you know, he, he stands out the most that, you know, didn't take no mess. The Zulus was known for warriors and also as the people of the heavens, which they also are the cousins of the Comedian people of Egypt and stuff. Living in the era of racism, <clears throat> like during Black Panthers, do you believe what black, specifically Black Panthers did, did um, like rivalry against white people, was that correct? Do you feel that I was right at the, to at the time? Well, the Black Panthers didn't just rivalry against white people, because the Black Panthers also had white people in their organization, and the same with the Young Lords Party, which was our, our Puerto Rican and other Latino and blacks that was doing their um, thing with the Black Panthers. Then you had some real radical groups that was white called the Weather Underground that, you know, at the time you would be scared to even walk in Manhattan or any place around the country which they was blowing up more radical than any Panther or um, Young Lord would ever be. So at that time you had a lot of groups that was coming out in the Americas that wanted change and revolution and it was tired of whether it was racism or the fight in Vietnam, everybody had some type of gripes against everything. When you were an upcoming artist, you played Malcolm X speeches over your music. Why Malcolm X out of all the civil rights leaders? Well, of course, Malcolm X was dealing with um, human rights and not just civil rights. So when you deal with human rights, it's, it's, you deal with more what's going on around the planet. So, you know, hearing the teachers of Malcolm, Jews, the teachers of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, and, and that's at a time when black people was colors and Negroes and coons and everything degenerate, calling black people and saying like Africa was the dark continent, which Africa was the really the mother and father of all civilization on the planet. So these teachers was a wake up call. So Malcolm was one of the best that was waking up where well, many of the other leaders was just trying to get the crumbs off the tables that was falling from America. When Malcolm and them was telling you to get up and do for self. In about 10 years, do you see hip-hop repeating itself? Well, hip-hop, everything goes in cycles in life. You know, everything is not new under the sun. Many things, people come out thinking they're coming out with something new, but find out somewhere along ancient days and times, some of the people did and done that years ago. And as we progress on and we get into higher knowledge, we will find out a lot of deep stuff going on back in the ancients of days that we are starting to find out now. Just like um, everybody think that there was only um, nine planets in our solar system. But um, in the universe of Zunesi, we always told them there's more planets than nine in our solar system or in our universe. And now NASA has found over 100 and they just found uh, over 100 more on top of that. So, you know, everything is always changing, there's always new knowledge. We might take what's the popular version of truth, but then when we deal with factology versus belief, then you see a whole different picture. That's why in the Zulu Nation we try to push more factology instead of beliefs. Because beliefs means that like, you really don't know what is real or what is not. With factology, you're getting that facts to the truth that you speak about. Do you think hip hop kind of encourages these things like teen pregnancy and underage drinking and violence and things like that? Well, not hip hop, the, the, the culture, 
is the rappers. Depends on which rappers you like listening to. So if you like to you know, watch yourself, shake your ass, show me what you can do, and then you know that's what you want to do. You know, if you're going to hear something about uh, um, um, when, when Tupac might tell you to keep your head up, but then you think he's contradicting when he's doing some other thing, but you know, well, at least there's a balance there. You know, if you're going to say something negative, at least say something positive too, and then let the people do a balance in their head to decide which way they, they want to go. But that's all between y'all, because each of your body is your first temple, your first church, and your first mosque. You are God and God is within yourself. So you got that little thing when you know, like let's say when you get ready to jump off a bungee thing and, and, and you, you say something comes to you, you say, now you know that's stupid. You know you shouldn't be jumping off that bungee trying to fly away in the air and stuff. And the other part say, go on, I'll listen to that good part, go on, jump. And you say, yeah, I really not, I shouldn't do this, but then you do it anyway. So it's, each of y'all got that God and that God is in your body and there's something that you always tell you when you know you're gonna do something wrong. You can feel in your heart. Is AIDS affecting the hip hop community just as it's affecting its urban consumers? And can the artists do something to influence their audience? What in particular can they do? Well, music and artists always had a, a way of influencing people around the world. Um, through the 60s and 70s, there have been a lot of groups that did things to bring about change in the world, especially when racism was super strong in our country over 30, 40 years ago in the 1960s and 50s. So it was groups like Sly and the Family Stone who first broke the barriers of um, black and white, had an interracial band, was telling people to stand, you are everyday people, you can make it if you try, don't call me nigga whitey, I want to take you higher. And um, you know, they was telling you then when you be happy, sing a simple song. Then you have James Brown who was trying to get people who was colored Negroes and degenerates telling you to say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Then you had Country Joe McDonald who was telling people, I'm fixing to die, what are we fighting for? The next stop is Vietnam, the whole Woodstock era. So you had a lot of people who was trying to wake up people and it was always musicians that took the cause to the, to the radio station and to the people with their music to cause about change. And the same thing in the 80s and the 90s with Live Aid, Farm Aid, We Are The World. So this is, um, it was always music to bring about a change. And the same in hip hop, when we did um, hip, um, hip Hop Artists Against Apartheid, the Free Nelson Mandela, we had United Artists Against Apartheid. So it was always music and, and musicians that got together and to say we tied up the crap and we decided to, to speak our minds or might go to jail and it's still happening to this day. You seem to accomplish many things in the past. Do you happen to have any other future goals? Yeah, well, I hope that the creator bless me to at least, you know, if I can't get there through a spaceship, to go through astral planes and some of these planets and see how funky it get, because that's always been a deep thing in my mind, the universe. You know, I, I can't, I used to bug out and hear stories about Columbus and the world is flat. And, and and then you you know you see the moons looking round and oval and so you know what we standing there on or hear people when they bug out talking about you really believe that there's things out there I said hell what do you what do you think Earth is at Earth is out there <laughs> so we out there living in so there's got to be some other places so you know the universe is real big and vast and so is the universes so you know we got to use our mind because you know too many of us are caught up into just living day by day and not seeing, you know, how we're going to be for the future or future generation or what's happened back then to where we at now or here or a lot of these um, so-called history books are really mixed with a lot of lies and certain things even in um, our so-called holy religious books and stuff. So we want right knowledge, right wisdom and right understanding and right sound reasoning. If certain thing doesn't sound right, that crap has to go. Don't tell me that Columbus discovered America mm -hmm. when it was millions of other people already here and many people came thousands of years before Columbus. So that crap has to go in this millennium.